John Bachman, thank you for sitting down with me. I'm excited to hear your insurance and, and yeah, claim specific, but your story of your career yeah. moving through the industry. Can you give people a quick heads up on who you are and what you do? So I'm John Bachman, uh, Vice President of Client Relations at Norwood Insurance Agency up here in Massachusetts. Um, currently an agent and wear all kinds of hats in the agency, um, but that's probably not what you're here to talk to me about. You're probably talking about the early stuff, right? Well, I'm interested in the whole progression, but I do want to hear the early stuff in in like the earliest of early. You've been in insurance for a while. You've been someone I've looked to on the claim side for a number of years, even though you're not in claims right now. But can you tell us about how did you get into it? Why claims and, and a bit of that journey? And, and I am curious about making that switch to what you do today, because I think it's a different path than people might expect when they think like, oh, I'm going to go adjust claims. How do I end up as an agent? You know, it's not necessarily links people would make. I'm curious about that. Yeah, so let's let's go way back. So before insurance, I worked for a college women's basketball team for four years. Um, that's what I was going to do. I was going to be a, a Division One assistant coach, working with my head coach, doing all that stuff. And unfortunately, her contract was non renewed, um, which means she was fired and her staff was gone. Um, so at that point, I was like, not doing anything. And I was trying to decide: Do I keep in college athletics? Is that where I want to be? But realize, you know, there's no stability there. Um, yeah. So my old man was basically like, you just get a job already. Come back home, get a job. And I had a buddy of mine that actually worked in a mailroom at an insurance carrier. And he's like, sign up with this temp uh, agency. Maybe you end up in the mailroom with me and we get to hang out all the time. Yeah. Awesome. Great Sounds idea. Good. Yeah. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, I ended up not in the mailroom. Um, I got appointed into the claims unit. Uh, at this time, I didn't know the difference between a policy number and a claims number. Legit, did not know the difference. And I was a payment processor in a medical um, unit uh, for auto losses. Um, learned a lot in a short amount of time. They were getting rid of some adjuster, needed adjusters, needed some new blood. They said, hey, do you want to be an adjuster? And at the time, I was a temp worker. I'm like, benefits? Ah, my yeah. hand was out shaking before they gave me an offer, which turns out I was, ended up being underpaid for several years. But that's a, another story for another time but ended up um, adjusting claims and did that for a long time, um, handled basically any type of claim you can imagine, ended up um, as a supervisor, claims manager, did all that thing for two different um, carriers. From there, I started open my mouth a little too much, writing articles, doing video work about yeah. the industry. Which that is how I got to know you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You opened I'm some glad you opened your too. mouth. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that actually opened some crazy doors for me um, when I was speaking around the country, ended up on the insure tech side uh, for two or three years, um, still within the insurance space um, for this tech company. That wasn't, it was uh, industry agnostic, but I was focusing on the in insurance industry. Yeah, you were the insurance guy, yeah. I, I was the insurance guy over there um, and was still doing my, my video work online, doing that fun deal. Um, but COVID was a, a, an eye opener for me where I realized I was missing some things with my kids. Um, yeah. I walked out in the middle of one of my daughter's dance recitals to catch a flight to Ohio, missed a son's flag football game. And it, when COVID finally was the realization of, man, I'm not getting that time back. Yeah. And yeah. at that time I was like, you know what? I'm going to do something local. And I thought about starting an agency from scratch, but thankfully my agency owner here, Brian, I met him at one of my speaking engagements. I was teaching a class and we became friends and we always talked about what it would be like if I ever joined on. Me at the time was always like, yeah, it's never gonna happen, never gonna happen. And then when I finally decided to pull that trigger, he was like, come on, let's make it work. And I said, yeah. all right, let's do this. So that's how I ended up at the agency side. I, I think that's a, I, I love that nuance of the story because I think that's something a lot of us miss is we get into these moments where, look, it's a relationship industry. Everyone said that forever, but it really is. And you make those connections and you have those conversations. And then there's that voice in your head that, no, nah, it's never going to happen. Um, yeah. Or, you know what, like, that's nice, but that's not really for me. I'm a claims person or I'm a this or I'm a that. And the reality is never say never. Those relationships matter and you don't know where it's going to play out. And and it is interesting. So you, you move to a different function. I'm curious to know, um, you know, given that claims is the best, I, like that's just factual, but Hell yeah. are there things you've brought forward from your claims experience and into the role that you have now that you think have been really valuable? Yeah. So let me take one step back and then we'll go right into that is first yeah. is when I was doing my video work, my big phrase was claims is the place to be. 
I ended up being known as the claims guy and all that stuff. Yeah. So when I ever talked about going to the tech side, it was like I was selling out. And then when I came to the agency side, the same way. And I, I and to me, I didn't care, but some people were starting to question of, oh, you were always talking about claims, claims, claims. Now you're not the claims guy. However, now more than ever, I think it's so important. And I'm surprised more people don't start in the claim side and end up on the sales side. Yeah. Um, not that it's quote unquote easy, but it feels easy when I'm selling. When I'm oh, selling up the stories. Mm. Um, if I'm talking to, let's say it's just a uh a personal lines policy and I'm selling a home in auto and I make a recommendation about an umbrella policy. Some agents, it might be hard to make that sell. For me, I talk about stories that I've handled where yeah. the umbrella had to come into play or on the commercial line side of, oh, you need this type of coverage. Oh, that's never going to happen to me. Oh yeah. Tell that to my, to my yeah. client that I handled this yeah. claim and he didn't think so either. And I had to write out that denial and I handed it to him. All of a sudden they're saying, all right, Let's sign up for that coverage. And it could be as simple as water backup on a home policy. And I talk about, hell, it even happened in my house. I had the water backup through the sump. I didn't have the coverage at the time. That now is seven grand out of my pocket. Do you have seven grand to pay for that? Um, so it, it, it provided me with that story. And hell, it was 15, 17 years yeah. of handling claims or managing teams of adjusters that I, I've seen a lot of things, um, a lot of bad things. And yeah. I'm trying to teach my clients how to avoid those. And yeah. again, it's it. I'm surprised there aren't more transition from the claim to the sales side. Um, yeah, I I would agree with you. I think there's no better place to truly understand what insurance really means than yeah. seeing it at the coal fla coal face where it plays out. And okay. yes, you see yes, a lot of terrible right. things, but you also see how the world sort of comes back together. You know, through the work of of good claims handling and coverage being there for people and and you see the gaps when it isn't well it, it you brought up a point too that it, it actually bothers me on this side of you talk to most agents they've probably never looked at the full policy or looked at certain endorsements in the policy hey, most people at companies don't either but when you're handling the claim you, the you need to know it you yep. need it yep. Uh, John, I do want to give you a moment to mention you've done some other things beyond speaking. There's some books that you have been a part of as well. Where where can people find more about that? I, I got to give you the space to share that. Well, you, you can look up my name on Amazon. They're on Audible. It's on Amazon. It's Barnes and Noble. You can find them. Uh, uh, I just happen to have one here. Hey, there you go. I, I do keep it at my desk. What, what's but, it? Yeah, show. Sure. What's it called? Successful Adjusters Playbook. Yeah, Successful Adjusters Playbook. I wrote this through um, uh, a friend of mine, Chris Stanley at IA Path. He, he has a publishing side of his business as well. And I co-authored two books with him as well, too. So if you check out iapath.com, um, um, you probably link it to this as well. Um, all of Chris's books as well as the two I co-authored with him as well as this version, um, the Successful Adjusters Playbook, which is what it is. It's about... Um, how do we interact with the other humans? So it's really not a nuts and bolts claims book. It's about how do I interact, the interpersonal skills that are necessary to give that person a great experience when they're having the worst day. It, it's a good basis for folks. So that means the world to me to hear stuff like yeah. that. No, that's great. And I mean, it is interesting how your career is sort of, it's not come full circle. It's like, it's gone in reverse. You were at the point where the coverage is delivered and now you're getting back to making sure the coverage is in place to begin with, which is a really interesting story. So if it makes you Thank feel you. terrible about yourself, you've just gone backwards in your career, but oh. in a really good way. <laughs> but you know what, it, whenever I have an initial conversation now with a client and I tell them, I, I said, I'm gonna do things different than most other agents because I think our industry, we've tried to oversimplify things. Mm. Go online, type in some info and here's your quote, here's your policy. But it overcomplicates it on the back end when there's a claim because yeah. that person doesn't know what gaps they should be anticipating. Yeah. Um, and so I say, I want to know you, I want to know your family, I want to know your business, and then we can talk insurance. And then we can start talking about plugging in those numbers and doing all of that. So yeah. it, it takes a little bit longer. Some people don't like that. They yeah. want to be able to get something instant. Probably not a good client for me, and that's okay. Um, yeah. There's other people that can help them. John, thank you for making some time and for sharing a bit about this. It's important Insurance Careers Month for people to think about, you know, how do I get into this, but what are the paths I can take and what, what ways can I grow and serve at the same time? So thank you for this.